Okay, page five in the dark blue folder, the handouts folder. This is the circulatory system. This is in your textbook. It looks like a very complicated uh, diagram. They usually show it with drawings. I took it and made it like this. It's called linear. It's one thing after the next, just with text. A small picture here, which I'll discuss. Um, and I need you to learn this and understand it. Okay? Learn and understand what is going on here. So, first of all, a few things before we actually get to the, the slide. Number one, uh, in medical texts or medical books, they will always show blood being red or blue. Right? There is no such thing as blue blood. Red, blood is always blue, always red, sorry. Blood is always red. But we depict certain blood as blue and certain blood as red. I will discuss and explain why that is and what it means. Okay. Um, this is a picture of the heart. Okay? Heart looks nothing like the heart uh, emoji. Uh, that you may see, or whatever else, but this is more or less what a heart looks like, okay? A heart is divided into four chambers, four cups. Each one is called a chamber, okay? And the top two have the same name, and the bottom two have the same name, which is really convenient. So we only have to really learn two words, okay? The bottom two are both called ventricles, all right? Where do we got to know? Ventricles. And the way we distinguish them, and we know which one we're talking about, is by left and right, okay? Now, next lecture, I'm going to explain to you why this is the right and this is the left. But for now, just take my word for it. I will explain it next lecture. So this is the right side of the heart, and this is the left side of the heart. So the bottom two chambers will be known as the right ventricle and the left ventricle. See how easy medicine is? Right? The left ventricle has a very thick muscular wall, and the reason for that is because the left ventricle, as you will see soon, pumps blood to the entire body. From the second a baby is born, starts to pump, until the second the patient dies. It doesn't stop. What happens if you lift weights from the second you're born to the second you die? What happened to the muscle of your arms lifting weights? Right? Okay? So this is the thick muscular wall that grows on the left ventricle because it's doing so much work. Think of it like that. Uh, the top two chambers are called atria. Guess what? This one is known as the right atrium, and this one is known as the left atrium. So we only have to learn two words over here for the chambers of the heart. Top ones are atrium, bottom ones are ventricle. Easy. Alright. If you look down, you'll see that the right are in blue and the left are in red. Okay? So we'll get to that as we go through what on earth is going on over here. Okay? So this is a heart, alright? And there's lots of pipes coming in and going out and we're going to learn how it all works and where it's coming from and going to. And this is really the first part of understanding anatomy of the body. Okay? Okay. Where are we going to start our journey? Now, see it's called the circulatory system. Circulatory comes from the English word circle. Circle, what's the property? What is the thing of a circle? Is that wherever you start, you also end. So, 
If you read your textbooks and you read standard medical literature, they will never start at the left ventricle. Okay? But I chose to. And the reason is because it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because if we start at the left ventricle and we end at the left ventricle, that's a circle. It's not really a circle, it's more of an eight that it's going to do, and I'll show you. And then when you look at your textbook or whatever, you look at it online, you'll, you'll see that um, this is exactly the flow. And as long as you know what's coming in and what's going out, and where, what is coming in and going out, that's all you need to know. Not too, not too complicated. We already learned that the top two chambers are called Atrium. The bottom two chambers are called ventricles. See? We're learning this. Right? Here we go. I'm starting here at the left ventricle, which is this chamber down here. And this is where I'm starting. Okay? My ventricles are all underlined to make sure you know that this is really important. This is what you need to know. Now, we have valves in and around the heart. A valve is nothing to be excited about. It's a one-way street sign. That's all it is. Just means that it's a flap and it only lets blood travel in one direction. You're lucky. For EMT school, you don't have to know the names of the valves or where they are. You will not be tested on that. It's great to know them. You don't have to. The valves, there are four of them, are all written in italics. Italics means slanted. So you don't have to know them. Everything else you have to know. I'll just mention them just so you get an idea. Okay? Alright. Within the circulatory system, we have two special types of pipes. Pipes, let's say pipes, vessels, and they bring blood to the heart and away from the heart. So let's just define these two types of pipes so we understand the difference. Okay? The first type I want to talk about are called arteries. It's different from the name of these chambers. Right? Make sure you don't make a mistake. These are called what? Atrium. And the pipes that I'm talking about are called? Arteries. Arteries. Very good. Arteries have a very, very special rule which never ever gets broken. So you ready? You need to write this down. Arteries always carry blood away from the heart. I call it the triple A. Arteries always away. Okay? So you may want to make a note near the word arteries. Again, arteries, what did I say? Let's get this clear. Always carry blood in which direction? Away from heart. Away from the heart. Oh, which one? Arteries. Arteries, doesn't matter. Always carry blood in which direction? Away from, away from, the, heart. Away from the heart. Fantastic. What was your word for Away. Triple A. Triple A. A, A, A. Arteries always away. Okay? Good. Well. Now, the other type of vessel that we're going to see in the body are called veins. V-E, here it is, I-N-S, veins. And they have a special rule also. They always carry blood to the heart. This rule of arteries and veins will never be broken. Never. So you've got to remember this. Arteries always Away. away. Triple A. 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 Arteries always away from the heart. Veins always to the heart. To the heart. To the heart. Very good. Now I want to go back to arteries for a minute. Most of the time, most of the time, arteries will be in red. 
because they carry oxygen in the blood most of the time. I'm going to teach you one exception that you have to learn. So, most of the time, arteries carry oxygen. Right, oxygen. We call it oxygenated blood. Okay, it'll be on next uh, time's lecture. But just get it oxygen in short, you write O with a little 2 on after it, on the bottom. O2. That's how you write oxygen in short. Most of the time, what do the arteries what carry? Is what is the initial? So oxygen 2? O2 blood. O with a little 2. It means because oxygen is made of two oxygen mo molecules. So that's why it's called O2. Doesn't, it's not a, it's not a Russian paper. It's, it just, that's a chemical name for oxygen, O2. Okay? Again, what do arteries carry? Within each artery, what will I always, always find, except for one exception? O2 blood. Right, oh, not just O2. O2 can't flow. It's the blood. Right, filled, think of it, filled with oxygen. Okay? I'll get to it soon. I'll get to it. We'll get to it. Away from the heart. Always away. There's no exception to that. Back to veins quickly. What do you think veins carry? Blood with, very good, little, or we could say no oxygen. The way we say it in medicine is deoxygenated. D D E veins. Deoxygenated, which means little or depleted or gone, the oxygen's been removed. Deoxygenated blood. No O2. The O2? Yeah, that's a good thing to write. You could, but it's not really a thing. But yes. If you know what it means, yes, you can write it. Deoxygenated, oxygenated, deoxygenated. Good. Now we have enough information to begin to understand the chart. Okay? So, first of all, whenever we use the color red, it's showing us that we're talking about oxygenated blood. So you may want to write that on the side. Red equals O2, oxygenated blood. And blue DO2 with deoxygenated blood, okay? So there's no such thing as blue blood. If someone gets cut, it's going to be red. There are differences in the colors. We'll talk about that on what another is the, night. What is the deo deoxygenated blood will be depicted as blue in all medical texts that are in color, okay? Everybody got these facts, right? Now let's start the journey. I told you I started from the left ventricle, that's because I chose to, right? And go through the aortic valve, don't have to learn the valve, into this pipe called the aorta. Now, what color is the word aorta? Red. 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 What type of blood is it carrying? Oxygenated. Very good. You must learn a fact about the aorta. It is the largest artery in the entire body. Right there. Aorta is the largest artery in the entire body. And this is a huge pipe, a huge hose that takes the blood from the left ventricle and starts the journey all the way to the entire body. That's why you said it's one way? Yes, because you don't want it coming back. Okay? It only wants to go one way. There are valve, four valves. The aorta is not a valve. It's also no, the aorta. The, valve? No. The, the aortic valve is the name of the valve. But the aorta is the pipe. Big, big pipe. I'll show you I'll show you a picture of it you know, later on. It's an artery. It's an artery, absolutely, yes. It's the largest artery in the body. And that's a fact we must know. Now, arteries, the aorta branches off into smaller arteries. And even smaller than an artery is called an arteriole. Now, the way you say something really small in medicine is to use this EO. I-O-L-E. EO. 
We're going to use it three times, twice tonight, and then we're going to use it somewhere else. So EO means like a small of whatever the word is in front of it. Okay? Like in Yiddish, you would say a benkel, a benkele, right? A tish, a tishele, whatever. It means a small of the same thing. In medicine, we use EO. Okay? So an artery and arterial, you see what color they are? They're red. They're still red. Why? What are they carrying? Oxygenated oh, blood. Oxygenated blood. Fantastic. Very good. Now we come to another type of blood vessel. The third type that we're going to introduce today. Okay? And those are called capillaries. Capillaries. Now what color do I have the capillary? Color mix. Mix. Mixed, right? But they're not mixed. It's actually, there's a special um, order over here. What do they start as? Red. Red, and white. then they end up as blue. Red, white, blue. blue. Red, white, blue. There's, yeah, there's no, no white. It's just red, blue. the blue. Okay. So what's going on? What's going on? Yeah. The heart, the left ventricle, is pumping, gives a, gives a squeeze sends the blood up into the aorta, goes into the arteries and arterioles until it reaches these tiny, tiny blood vessels called capillaries, okay? The job of the capillary is to go very, very close to a part of your body, let's say an organ, let's say something on the inside, doesn't matter. And the, the job of the, the capillary is to allow the oxygen to leave, to walk through the wall. The capillary wall is very thin. Oxygen can lead through the wall and go into whatever organ it needs to get to. Remember, every part of every body needs oxygen all the time. And this is how the oxygen is transported in the blood. We'll talk more about blood on another day. But for now, just understand that the capillary wall is so thin, it allows the oxygen to leave and to go into whatever organ or tissue or whatever needs the oxygen. It's the last stop for the oxygen. But it's a vein. No, it's a capillary. It's a part of the artery. It's a capillary. It's still an artery. Still, no, it's a capillary. It's a third, there's arteries, veins, and they're joined together by capillaries. Okay, I'll explain what happens next. Just understand this so far. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay? These are capillaries. Um, the medical word for the gas leaving, going through into something else, through the wall, is called diffusion, if you want to know. Not something you'll be tested on, but just the word that, that uh, describes the oxygen leaving the capillary, going into the organ, is called diffusion. That's a science term that's used in medicine. All right. Now, at the same time that the capillary is giving off the oxygen, the organ is getting rid of a waste gas. Okay? Does anybody know what the waste product of life, of our metabolism is? Anybody know? What gas do we blow out? Very good. Carbon dioxide, written as CO2. CO2, carbon dioxide. Very good. So at the same time that the oxygen leaves the capillary and goes into the organ, the CO2 leaves the organ and goes into the capillary. So they're just switching. And this is going on all over the body, all the time, constantly. Okay? 
because the oxygen needs to get in, the CO2 needs to yeah. get out. We're going to talk a lot more about CO2, carbon dioxide, and oxygen later. But for now, just to understand what's going on. So now, when the capillaries have given off all the oxygen, what's left in the capillary? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, and we just call that deoxygenated blood. Okay, we just go by the oxygen now. So is it oxygenated or is it deoxygenated? So now we're left with deoxygenated blood. The, the capillary end will be attached to veins and venules. Again, what's a, what's a venule? Small, small, small vein. What color are my veins? Blue. Blue. Why? Deoxygenated. Yes. What direction are we going though? To the heart. To the heart because they're veins. So now we've used up, now we're going back to the heart. Now, the two largest veins in the whole body accept all the used blood. One is above the heart, one is below the heart. And we call them by the same name. They are called the vena cava. Okay, these are the biggest veins. One is called the superior vena cava, and one is called the inferior vena cava. You need to know these words. One is coming from the legs and the body into the heart, from below. It's called the inferior vena cava. One is coming from the brain and the upper body down into the heart, that's called the superior vena cava. Okay? We don't say medicine higher and lower, we say superior and inferior. inferior. Next class is going to be a lot of new vocabulary words. These will be included, these two, alright? Superior means higher, inferior means lower. So all the blood from the veins and the venules will be transported now into the superior and inferior vena cava. Very good. Now, where, what are they connected to? Well, they're connected to the right atrium. So you see, we went from here, we went out around the whole body, we got used, and then we start to come back, and we come back into this chamber, the right atrium. What sort of blood is found in the right atrium? The oxygenated blood. Make sense? Blue. Blue. Well, because not, not just because it's coming from the venous system, right? The venous system carries the oxygenated blood. So it makes sense. Very good. Between the atrium and the ventricle, there is nothing except for a valve. Nothing happens, okay? The blood just drops from the right atrium into the right ventricle. What sort of blood will be in the right, right ventricle? The exact same blood that was in the right atrium. Nothing changed. Fantastic. So now we're here in the right ventricle. Everybody with me? What? So again, why is it blue and red? Because it goes out. The capillary, yeah. because it came in from the arterial system, right. full of oxygen. The oxygen left, CO2 took its place, and now it goes into the venous system, but it has no oxygen. Yeah. So it becomes blue. The oxygen. It goes to the atrium and then it goes to the ventral. The right side, yeah. Yeah. So, right atrium, and then it goes right into the right ventricle. Straight down. Through a valve. What? What is the difference between What's the difference? What? Two different chambers? Yeah. Yeah. It's four chambers total. Okay? Now we're going to see something called. Now where are we? We're in the right ventricle. Now we're going to leave the heart. We're going to leave the heart. We're going to go what direction? Out of the heart. Away. So, what's it called if we're going away? What's it called? Arteries. It's called an artery, right? Because we're going away from the heart. But, what is in the right ventricle? Deoxygenated blood. Here is 
your artery exception. It's called the pulmonary artery. It's in blue. And it's carrying what? The oxygenated blood. This is your exception artery. Why is it called an artery? It's going away. It's in the right ventricle. Now it's leaving to go to the lungs. Okay? And it's called the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary uh, means lungs. P, PN, pneumonia. Uh, many words I'm going to teach you have to do with the lungs and breathing. Begin with a PN or PL, whatever. So pulmonary artery is the special artery that connects the heart with the lungs. And where does it lead from? It leads from the right ventricle. And this is your exception to the artery. And there's no O2. There's no O2. Well, how could it have got O2? You see where it's coming from. It's coming used up from the body into the superior inferior vena cava, going to the right atrium, to the right ventricle, and now it's going in. Now it's going out of the artery. But it's still called an artery. Of course, it's going away. Right? It's leaving the heart now. Yes. So it's called an artery. Very good. All right. Now it leaves the artery. The pulmonary artery connects the right ventricle with the lungs. Now the lungs are not part of the circulatory system. The lungs are not. Okay? The lungs are in the respiratory system. And we're going to address that on another day. But, in the lungs, we have something called the pulmonary capillaries. Now, this is complicated, we're going to do it on another day, so for now, just take my word for it, that in the pulmonary capillaries, the blood's coming in deoxygenated, blue, it's going to get oxygenated because the oxygen is the in the alveoli in the lungs. And it's going to leave the lungs fully oxygenated. How's it going to get back to the heart? Through the pulmonary vein. It has the same name, pulmonary artery, away, pulmonary vein, back. Oxygenated blood. Very good. Which is the only chamber that we didn't use. It's only one chamber that we didn't use. It's the left atrium. That's where the blood comes back from the lungs into the left atrium and then drops down into the middle valve to the left ventricle and it all starts over again. Okay, the alveolar. So in the lungs are very, very tiny little sacs, little bags that are inside the lungs. We're going to look at them on another night. And that's where the oxygen is stored for the pulmonary capillaries to get. Yeah. Okay. And it's the same thing. The pulmonary capillaries give the alveoli the CO2. When you breathe out, you breathe out all that CO2, the carbon dioxide. When you breathe in, the oxygen goes into the alveoli and is given to the pulmonary capillaries, which then goes into the pulmonary vein and back to the left side of the heart. Questions? So one of the alveoli is, is, a, is, a, is the little thing that... The little sacs that are inside the lungs, we're going to talk about them on another lecture, okay? You want to shut the uh, corner?